Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of George Alfred Sodini? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. George Alfred Sodini was born on September 30, 1960, and lived in Scott Township, Pennsylvania. This is just southwest of Pittsburgh. As an adult, he lived alone in a two-bedroom ranch house and worked as a systems analyst in the finance department of a law firm in Pittsburgh. George never married and never had any children. He was desperate to find a romantic partner and was highly interested in women who were in their 20s or 30s. He noted that he did not have success in this endeavor, and he felt like he did not have any control over his life. I'll talk more about his feelings in the analysis. In 2008 and 2009, George planned to conduct a shooting at an L.A. fitness center that was just a few miles from his house. He was a member of this fitness center and would frequently exercise there. The motive for his attack was a hatred of women. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On August 4, 2009, George Sodini made his way to the L.A. Fitness Center in Collier Township at 11 a.m. He left the center and returned at 7.40 p.m. He left again and made a phone call five minutes later. George went back inside the fitness center for the third and final time at 7.56 p.m. He was carrying two 9mm Glock semi-automatic pistols, a 32 caliber semi-automatic pistol, and a 45 caliber revolver. At about 8.15 p.m., he entered an aerobics class and placed his duffel bag on the floor. He turned off the lights and removed two 9mm pistols from the bag. George fired the weapons at least 36 times while aiming at people in the fitness center. He murdered three women and injured nine other people. George then used the 45 caliber revolver to bring an end to his own life. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. George kept a blog on his own website. Apparently the website was public, but it is not clear if anyone ever looked at it prior to the attack. George made a series of disturbing and revealing entries on the blog in 2008 and 2009. One of the major themes in the blog was how he could not find a romantic partner. He had been rejected by women several times and was extremely frustrated. He believed that women just didn't like him and he did not know why. He insisted that he was, quote, not ugly or too weird, unquote. Finding a partner became a puzzle that George could not solve. George could be considered an incel or involuntary celibate. He didn't appear to interact with that community, but he shared many of their beliefs. Item number two, George made repeated efforts to be attractive to women. For example, he went to the fitness center and worked out. He went on a diet and tried to lose weight. George dressed in a way that he believed was appealing, and he implied that his bathing activity was sufficient. Nothing seemed to work. George became fascinated with trying to learn how to attract a woman. He read a self-help book and attended a seminar on that topic. At the seminar, George took a lot of notes and was described as studious and quiet. Many of the men there were uncomfortable, but they eventually relaxed. George never did. He was nervous the entire time. In February 2008, shortly after the seminar, George made an awkward video which he posted online. George walked around his house and described its various features with the hope of attracting a woman. The video was like an advertisement for George as a potential romantic partner. He pointed out his television, computer, stereo speakers, and noted that the couch and chairs matched. He mentioned that a woman would really be impressed by the matching furniture. He then showed off the dining room, the two bedrooms, the kitchen, and finally, his basement. The video was tremendously sad, and the loneliness he experienced was effectively communicated through it. George clearly had no idea what was important to a potential romantic partner. His matter-of-fact description of the contents of his house was cold, emotionless, and technical. Not surprisingly, George's video did not help him find a date. 
if romantic partners were routinely attracted to the serial killer look, then I think his video would have led to a lot of dates, especially the part where he toured his basement. Item number three, people who knew George made various observations about him. It appeared as though he did pretty well at his job. In July 2009, he was promoted and received a raise, at least according to his blog. Despite this, he immediately focused on the negative and talked about how he was lonely. George was described by his neighbors as being a recluse who had stopped talking to them in the years leading up to the attack. Many people described him as socially awkward, but noted that he did not appear to be dangerous. Other people found him to be creepy. For example, George attended a local church for a while, but stopped going in 2006 after an incident with a woman who felt as if he was paying too much attention to her. Item number four. Throughout his blog posts, George talked about conducting the attack at the LA Fitness Center. He referred to this attack as his exit plan. He mentioned some of the preparations that he had made, including his intent to consume alcohol to boost his courage. On New Year's Eve in 2008, George posted that his anger and rage had subsided since lifting weights. This seemed like a positive sign, but then he mentioned how he was looking forward to conducting the attack on January 6, 2009. George hoped that it would not snow because there wouldn't be as many people available to shoot if it did. One day before the scheduled attack, George visited the fitness center and found it to be crowded. He felt like this was good because he could kill more people that way. On January 6, George posted that he did not follow through with the attack as planned. He said, quote, I chickened out, unquote. Item number five, George frequently quantified his romantic failures and prospects. For example, he talked about how he had not had a girlfriend since 1984 and had not had sex since 1990. He added that he only had sex between 50 and 75 times in his entire life. George implied that being single left him with extra money, which he used to travel. He enjoyed it, but also said that traveling alone was not too fun. So he contradicted himself there. On another occasion, he expressed his frustration about his perception of being rejected by 30 million women over the last 20 years. This number was an estimate he developed based on how many desirable single women there were available in the United States. Item number six, George repeatedly stressed how important it was to have a woman in his life. He didn't think that this was specific to him. Rather, it was a reality for all men. He believed that a man needed a woman for confidence and that being alone for too long could destroy a man. He saw life as a closed world where he was, quote, specifically and totally excluded, unquote. Just like many incels, George believed that every man could find a woman except for him. This brings me to item number seven. Not only did George hate women, he hated men who women accepted as romantic partners. These successful men were the focus of his jealousy. George greatly overestimated how often other people had sex. For instance, he believed that young people had sex three times a day. He was upset because this meant they had more sex in a month than he did throughout his entire life. George viewed himself as being denied sex and everyone else as having access to more sex than they could physically handle. Item number eight, one theme in George's blog was his powerlessness. He repeatedly stated that nothing would change in his life no matter what goals he set or how hard he tried. George talked about how it was futile to even try to find a romantic partner, saying, quote, No matter how many changes I try to make, things stay the same. Every evening I am alone, and then go to bed alone, unquote. He also mentioned how he knew that he would never enjoy life. He always had feelings of fear, worry, discontentment, and helplessness. Item number nine, George was permeated with perpetual pessimism. Even when other areas of his life were going well, George repeatedly focused on his loneliness. Nothing could outweigh that despair. On one occasion, over three months before the attack, George talked about how he went on a date with a woman. Based on his beliefs, one would think that George would have been thrilled, that his whole life would have looked a lot brighter. Instead, he once again talked about how no one found him to be attractive. 
Item number 10. On the day before the attack, George talked about practicing for it, and he revealed his opinions on the afterlife. He was not worried about going to hell because he believed that Jesus had died for everyone's sins, including the sin that he was about to commit. God would not judge him because the penalty for sin was already paid. George concluded the century by talking about how any of his papers could be published freely. He would not be embarrassed because he would be dead. He noted that some people studied killers like him. Maybe by examining his writing, others would benefit. This last entry demonstrates how George did not want to take responsibility for his bad acts. He convinced himself that he wasn't making a choice to kill innocent people. Rather, it was unavoidable. In the end, George wanted to be remembered as a victim. Item number 11. Out of all the incels who committed homicide, George Sodini is often thought of as the most pathetic. People are tempted to have some degree of sympathy for him because he seemed like he was so hapless, lost, and naive. George was certainly limited as far as his ability to relate to people, which was undoubtedly challenging, but he was also self-centered, envious, and had a sense of entitlement. George had no empathy or remorse. He blamed everyone else for his inability to find a romantic partner. There is no question that George was not particularly attractive, but he could have found a partner. And even if he couldn't, this does not justify murder. Like many incels, George was only interested in the most attractive women. He acted like any romantic partner would do, but that was not the case. George claimed that he was trying to be more attractive, but he really didn't work to change his attitudes and beliefs. He focused more on marketing than on self-improvement. From his perspective, the problem was that women didn't realize how great he was. They didn't understand his true nature. They didn't appreciate the real George. In reality, the reason he failed romantically was because women knew exactly what George was like. He was exceedingly creepy, and he treated women as objects. Now moving to my final thoughts. George Sodini realized the importance of emotionally connecting with people, but he did not know how to recognize or understand emotions. They were foreign to him. He knew that emotions existed, but they were out of his reach. Instead of accepting that he had a minor deficit, he came to believe that all women had a major deficit. He blamed women for his limitation. Furthermore, he determined that the penalty for his suffering was death. George was effective at convincing many people that he wasn't such a bad guy, despite being a killer, but he was able to do this by hiding his narcissistic nature. It would appear that George understood at least one emotion. He knew how to convince people to feel sorry for him. Those are my thoughts on the case of George Alfred Sodini. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.